Okay, now we're on chapter four, lesson six, decimal multiplication. Before I really start this lesson, um, this is gonna be one of those longer videos where I give a couple of background knowledge. And I wanna start by saying that multiplication doesn't always make a number get bigger. So for instance, if you multiply by a number less than one, your number is gonna get smaller than what it was originally. And let's kind of like go through this. You know, a lot of teachers say of is like substitute substitute for multiplication. Um, it kind of is, but let's go through some statements. Let's say I have some stickers. I have 12 stickers. And one third of the stickers are basketball stickers. And I wanna know how many basketball stickers I have. The other stickers might be like about animals or something else. But one third of my 12 stickers is basketball stickers how many basketball stickers do I have so one third of 12 is going to be the kind of the statement of is kind of like multiplication so one third times 12 so what you're doing here is if I want to solve this I could have 12 I'll have 12 things and in groups of three so I'll go one two three four five six seven eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. And if I had one third of 12, that means I have 12 total objects in three equal groups, and I have one third of them. I have one of these groups. So my total is four basketball stickers. These other eight are going to be other kinds of stickers, but four of them are basketball stickers, one third of 12. I'm going to do another example. Let's say I have cookies, and one-sixth of the cookies are chocolate chip. How many chocolate chip cookies do I have? So um, if I had 24 total cookies, one-sixth of 24, one-sixth times 24, what we'll be doing is we'll have 24 whole, and we're going to divide them into six equal groups. You see that, that denominator right there? So to draw this picture out, I'll go one, two, three, four, five, six. And you can see I stopped at six equal groups because that's our denominator. And I'm gonna keep drawing these circles until I hit 24. So the six, the denominator shows the different groups, one, two, three, four, five, six groups. And I'm gonna keep adding to these groups until I hit 24. So seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So you can see that each group has four in it. And I have one sixth of 24. I have one group of this 24. I have four cookies that are, I think I said chocolate chip. So the answer is four here. And I'm gonna give you one more problem um, before jumping into this lesson where um, I'm going to have a different numerator. So let's say two sevenths of 28. Two sevenths of 28 means two sevenths times 28. And we're going to use the denominator to tell you how many equal groups I'll have, and we'll stop at the number 28. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven groups, and I'm gonna continue until I hit 28. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Am I done yet? No, I only said 14 and we have to hit 28. Continue, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Am I done now? Nope, we have to stop at 28. 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. And you can see that I have seven equal groups with four in each to get 28. And now my numerator is telling me I have two of those groups. So I have one, two, and that's a total of four plus four, which is eight. We're gonna be doing something very similar, but this time we're gonna be using two decimals. Um, 
decimals are very similar to fractions and so you can see we're going to have a part of a part of something and so a part of a part of something can sound a little intimidating but we're going to break it down and the most important thing is to understand where the numbers are coming from and why it looks like that all right okay now we're going to be looking at decimals keep in mind when we're looking at tenths they're longs and so what they did here was that they took the six tenths first. And they looked at the six tenths going this way. And they said one tenth, two tenth, three tenth, four tenth, five tenth, six tenths. This right here, this section is six tenths. And you could tell because seven, eight, nine tenths, those are the ending ones. Now imagine when we were doing the 12 total, or let's say for this one was a total of 28, and we only had a part of that, we had two sevenths of that. So this was the total amount, and then you had a part of that. That's what's going to happen here. This is the part that we have. We don't even touch this, this section that's white here, we're not even touching it. We're only looking and concerned with this six tenths. And of this six tenths, we only have three tenths of that. So we don't have the whole thing. So you do is you take the first number and you look at what section of the whole that is. Then you take your three tenths and you're saying that you have only three tenths of the six tenths. And so you have one, two, three tenths. This section right here where the three tenths and the six tenths intersect it's going to be your answer. Six tenths is how much you have, and your part is just three rows of that, three tenths of that section. Just like you had here, you had 28, and you had two sevenths of it, you had two circles of it. Instead of there being two circles and two groups, it's three rows. So you have one, two, three rows, but only up to the six tenths. Keep in mind, we don't have this, whatever is in white here, we don't own at all. So here's the six tenths, and we only have three tenths of that, three of the rows. And if you count them up, there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen hundredths. And that will be your answer. Another way to solve the answer is to multiply it out yourself. 6 times 3 is 18. Regroup. 6 times 0 is 0 plus 1 is 1. And then you move your decimals. Is there a decimal there? Yes. How many times did you have to move the place value? One time. Is there a decimal in the second number? Yes. How many times did you have to move your place value? One time. 1 plus 1 is a total of 2 moves. 1, 2. And you can see here you get 18 hundredths. So let's try doing number two. We're going to take the 8 tenths, circle it, and identify 8 tenths going this way. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 tenths. So we're not concerned with anything that's not within the 8 tenths realm. And of this 8 tenths, we only have two rows of it. And we know that because of the number you're multiplying by, the 2 tenths. So here you have 1 tenth and 2 tenths. So this section right here is your answer. So let's count it up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And these are hundredths, so 16 hundredths. To double check our answer, we could multiply it out. 8 times 2 is 16, regroup the 1. 8 times 0 is 0, plus 1 is 1. And we look for our decimals. Is there a decimal in the first number? Yes, there is. You move the place value a total of one time. 
Is there a place, a decimal in the second number? There is. You move the place value one time. The total movement will be two place values, one, two. And you can see that you have 16 hundredths. All you have to do is keep in mind that the first number, it's telling you how much of that part you have. So just like with the example here, the numerator told you how many groups to circle. This number, the decimal, tells you how many rows you have. You have two rows of it, two tenths of it. And just like the 20, it told you how many circles you had all together. The second number tells you how many rows going this way you have, uh, which are columns. Columns go this way, rows go this way. So how many columns you have. Let's do one more to help you out. Here we have one and seven tenths. So we have this full whole one. And then we have only seven of these, seven tenths. And instead of counting them out, you can see that I went a little bit quicker. And the way I know that this is seven tenths is I do in my head, 10 minus seven is three. So I'm gonna have three empty columns. So instead of like I did for numbers one and two, where I went one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, a faster way to do it is say 10 minus seven is three. So there should be three blank columns. Seven tenths will be the first seven. Then we take the five tenths. And so we know that we're going to be going one, two, three, four, five, which is halfway. And over here. Five tenths. And so this whole section is going to be filled in. And so this whole section counts as well as this five tenths all the way up until the seven tenths. And so where there's three empty rows there. Your answer will be the combination of this section filled in and this section filled in. So these two areas combined. Then you could double check your answer using multiplication. I hope that this video helps, uh, helps set up the equation for numbers 10 and 11, but I will not solve it for you. And with those help, hopefully you could do the backside, especially numbers one and two. Number 10, a certain type of bamboo plant grows one and two tenths feet in one day. At that rate, how many feet could the plant grow in zero and five tenths a day? So you could see here that in one day, it could grow one and two tenths of a foot feet. However, we're not even talking about a whole day. In fact, 0 0.5, 0 and 5 tenths is actually half a day. So what you'll be doing is try to find out a part of that. 1 and 2 tenths times 0 and 5 tenths. And if you were to draw a picture box for this, one day, I'm not sure how to do a picture box for that one. I'm going to think about that one. I'll let you guys know during class. But that's the equation for it. The distance from the park to the grocery store is nine tenths of a mile. Ezra runs eight tenths of that distance and walks the rest of the way. How far does Ezra run from the park to the grocery store? What I love about this question is that it's very much, how do you change math, uh, English into math English? So the key sentence here is eight tenths of that distance. Eight tenths looks like what number? Zero decimal eight, because eight is in the tenths place. So on top of eight tenths, I'm gonna write the number 0 0.8. So all we're doing here is taking a math, math, an, an English sentence and change it into math terms. So instead of reading the word eight tenths, I'm gonna put 0 0.8, because eight, 0 0.8 is eight tenths. Of that distance, the distance they're referring to is the nine tenths of a mile. So they're saying eight tenths of nine tenths. And we've seen eight tenths of nine tenths before. 
of means multiplication, so 0 and 8 tenths times 0 and 9 tenths. Yeah, this one was a lot more fun because I knew how to explain that one better. But I'll think about number 10 um, and discuss it with you tomorrow. For now, just change the math, you know, the English into math English. 8 tenths of 9 tenths. Go ahead and solve number 10 and 11 and ask me any questions later.